Hello, Yo, hello. Up, man? Hey, you got me all right? Yeah, looks like you're coming in, or I'm hearing you anyway. Excellent. All right. Uh, everything sounds, looks good on my end. Everybody, welcome in. Hey, to the Mo. Uh, Mo, the man. Just released, uh, we already have a comment in the chat. Tell him nice hat. So, you got that one going. Oh, thank you. Um, anyone in the chat, we are, or anyone listening to this later, we are doing this live on Twitch. So, if someone comes in, poses a question, uh, I can uh, relay that to Mo as we as we talk through what we're going to talk about today. But otherwise, um, let's. Uh, you've just released the third uh, in a series uh, album, this Internet Friends uh, series that you've been doing. And we're going to jump into some of the details of that, and I'm going to bring it up on Spotify in a second while you're uh, chatting here. But one thing I always like to ask when we have someone on is, can you give us the the origin story of you as a character growing up, uh, childhood, family, first location to current location? What's a, what's a little story and background for people to get to know you? Uh, yeah, man, that's gonna be hard. All right, so <laughs> I was born two months premature, almost died. No, uh, I mean that is true, but okay. I don't think y'all need all that. Uh, so I lived in a town called Warica, Oklahoma. It's very, very small. You know, it's a very tiny town. Like had about three thousand people in it when I grew up there. It's shrunk yeah. a little since then. And um, yeah, I lived there my whole life. I hated it. Uh, I would say I probably became like a depressive person in ninth grade, and then I went to this. Um, psychologist that they just told my mom like you need to get him to a bigger town he has like just he doesn't get along with all these small town kids mm. and my mom was like uh no so uh you know i just kept living there and uh, eventually i went off to college uh i got accepted to a few schools i went to one that i thought a couple of my friends were going to come here with me and then they didn't <laughs> they decided to do other things so i ended up going to college by myself at this town called ada oklahoma you can learn more about this town on the netflix series called an innocent man uh it's all set in this town so that's kind of fun and um yeah so just a little college town i joined this fraternity which isn't like a real fraternity i mean it is it's like a national real thing but we don't have a fraternity houses on our campus it's like mm -hmm. not allowed so it was really like a club with guys you hung out with and partied with but it wasn't like uh i don't know i didn't live with like a hundred guys you know right in a, mm -hmm. in a frat house so it was kind of different um but yeah, so in college, I started rapping at bars, kind of through, not through the fraternity, but, you know, because I went to a lot of parties, yeah. uh, because of them, uh, I was always at, at parties, at bars, in the freestyle circles, enjoying that, always loved the rap music. Uh, you know, I probably recorded like six, 700 songs, you know, at this point, if yeah. I include all the freestyles I made back in the day that we would do. Um, and then at some point in time, I was like, I'm going to write some music. And then that led to uh being a rapper i guess and then yeah. i quit for a few years came back uh after i quit a, a job i hated and was like you know what i'm gonna get back on this rap and shit and then mm -hmm. now i learned how to make beats and it's really just been going great lately i would say yeah so i don't know if that was enough details absolutely i think i think we got some i think we got something to go on uh we got a, we got a, a piece of the piece of the puzzle um, you say it's right. been going great lately. Uh, what are what's some like recent wins? What's been feeling like that's a a good build for you right now? Um, well, I have a podcast as well, so I haven't really yep. gotten to that. Uh, you know, it's uh, I've gotten like over two hundred and fifty episodes. I think I just yep. uploaded two sixty one this morning. Um, yep. so we're really up there, and um, I've gotten some patrons on that. You know, some mm -hmm. people I don't even know, like people that I've never met in real life that are giving me money. So I always think that's cool um right. internet friends three like i said just came out i've gotten lots of dope feedback on that so yeah. far no one said anything negative so yeah. i'm like all in all things are going all right yeah man uh we were listening yesterday on uh, stream i know you were dropping dropping by when you were able uh and that kind of became our our main like uh, music. We do feedback on on Saturdays on stream, and so when when we had a lull in people coming in and submitting stuff, we're like, well, let's put on a few more a few more tracks of Internet Friends. One of the things I I loved ab about this, and I think you, uh, you know, Internet Friends, it's it's in the name. There's a lot of a lot of friends collaborating online on this. A lot of other artists you invite onto these these projects. I've been on before, and what 
I, th- I think one of the cool things that it brings out when you have such a diverse cast, should we say, is that there's a lot of different styles uh, that come out. And that's also, I think, very nice and necessary in a, um, you know, 18 track project as well to keep things varied. I thought there was really excellent um, variation between tracks on this project when when we were listening and that there'd be a completely different sound that hits your ear and and you're like, oh, cool. This doesn't sound like anything I've heard so far on this uh, project. Um, So that's cool was there what was kind of your thought but behind starting this internet friends um series of projects and i guess after the first one why did you decide to to keep it going or what seemed like it was working or that you had paid off uh yeah so originally my whole uh inspiration i guess for the series is uh, when i was saying I, I started rapping in college and stuff uh i would get on the internet on this website called soundclick.com it still exists it okay. just used to be like a way bigger deal and there was all these forums you know and you would meet other rappers and you would collab with them and do this stuff and there was this guy named supata and supata was from the dmv and he had a series called the unsigned high volume one two three four you know and i remember i got on two or three you know like and i felt like so cool to be on this collection of like really good rappers. And uh, I don't know, there was something about that that I always really enjoyed. And so I have all these beats because I learned how to make beats. I just had a right. bunch of beats sitting around and uh, was like, hey, let's um, let's fucking make some shit. Because something I realized once I learned to make beats and kind of got into the, like, you know, I used to back in the day, I would just download beats and freestyle on them and put them up. Yeah. I didn't think about <laughs> buying, any, buying or owning a beat or anything like that. And with streaming, it's really brought that to the forefront. Like, you really kind of got to be about it, or you should be, I feel like. Right. And so a lot of people just get an offer of, like, here's a free beat. Just make something with it. Because I think yeah. what I do differently is this. I just – I send – I mean, you know because you've been involved. Yeah. I send an email with a link to, like, 30 or 40 beats, and I'm like, tell me which beat you want, and it's mm-hmm. yours. And then you make a song and leave me a spot. Yeah. And that's kind of how it works. Yeah. And uh, – I think that there's a lot of freedom in that. You know, I know myself when someone sends me a song to do a a verse for, Mm -hmm. I don't feel the pressure that I feel on my own songs. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's like a solo song, I feel like I have to be like more real or more vulnerable. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I do certain stuff that it's like an A to the most song, you know, whereas if it's me doing something or someone else, you kind of get to have fun. And so I think uh, this also helps me have fun songs because like I said, I don't make many on my own, like when it's just me. So right. um, I think that's kind of why I keep it going. And also in the world we're in, I mean, this is more or less a mixtape. Yep. Um, you know, like where you put it out and hopefully if everyone shared it that we're on it, you know, then uh, they'd be like, hey, check out my songs, this one or whatever. You know, it helps get shares. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to act like I don't do it for yeah. that. Uh, and it builds Definitely. a little bit of a community as mm-hmm. well. So um, this is kind of how it all started. I'm debating if I want to do a fourth one or not. Um, you know, I've talked about it a little bit on my podcast and uh, we'll see. We'll see if it happens. I, I kind of want to because I love it. I think it's really fun, but it is a lot of work. Like it's a lot more yeah. work than I think uh, a lot of people realize. Yeah. And especially because, you know, I think one thing too you can think from the outside looking in is if you send a bunch of beats and you have people maybe writing the ma- the majority of the song they're on and leaving a verse or some of the hook or, or something for, for you to do. It can, it can feel like, um, that like, ah, well that's a, you know, that, that's a good, good system smart. Then you're getting other people like doing a lot of this work or whatever. But what I think is it also that people don't think about is you, I'm trying to think of a good analogy for it, but you, you then have to take a lot of parts that each person wasn't thinking about fitting together and put it into something cohesive. And when you're mixing it, when you're mastering, especially and trying to get these things to, to, to sound like a project, even if it is a mixtape versus some high concept album or something. And um, I think that's something maybe people underestimate when it comes to the, the workload is there's, there's a lot, there's a lot going on. You know, it's kind of like, uh, I, I don't know how to think of it, but if you sent out, you know, a bag of Legos to all of your friends and you said, here, look at all these these pieces I'm giving you, make, make something cool with it. And then everyone sends it back. And now all of a sudden you've got to make it into a scene or a project that works. And one guy sent you 
a weird dinosaur he made, and another guy sent you a dump truck, and you've got to figure out how you're going to make this into something that is an overall works in a way. And I think that right. that then there's a lot to, for you to do on on that end of things. Um, it's like Robot Chicken. I'm basically making yeah. a Robot Chicken album. Yeah, and um, how I would say, uh, how long have you been? putting music actually on Spotify since that's a big player, but you've been doing things long before then. Uh, yeah, I would say that was 2018, I think. Yeah. So pretty recent 2019. grand scheme of things. Yeah. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Well, once I learned how to make beats, so it'll be three years this July for mm-hmm. how long I've been making beats. And so before then, what really inspired me to make beats, which is like a, not a good story, but some guy tried to charge me like a ridiculous amount of money for a beat after he like harassed me to buy a beat from right. him. And then I was like, uh, sure, I like this one. And he was like, that one's $2,000. And I was like, what, what the fuck? No, I don't want it. And then through that, I was like, wait, wait, someone does though. Someone probably does yeah, spend yeah, money sure. like that on this stuff. And so it just kind of led down there. And I've always been interested in making beats as being a rapper, but <clears> I tried it, you know, six, seven years ago, made one beat and was like, that was horrible and gave up. Whereas in... <laughs> Yeah. When I learned it this time, I took a week off work and I watched like 80 hours of YouTube videos. It was like, I'm going to learn this. And then, yeah. you know, I've come a long way. It wasn't that great at Internet Friends 1. I think you can mm-hmm. definitely hear the progression right. um, in the beats. Uh, yeah, that is part of it. And then real quick to go back to something you said, yeah. uh, of like uh, other artists doing a lot of the work, um, that is totally a benefit of it. Like mm-hmm. uh, something I struggle with is having like an artistic vision for a song sometimes whenever – uh, cause like, again, I'm always coming from my place, you know, like mm-hmm. what I want. I'm always talking first, always rap about myself, which is something uh, not all rappers do. Like, you know, I'm always like, well, I'm going to talk about my struggles and my problems. So like having another rapper, like, Hey, there on the internet friends three is about like, butterflies and hummingbirds. It's not, it, yeah. it is and it isn't, you know, but like, I would have never come up with that hook myself, but having like mountain man who's, you know, younger and probably a little more creative and experimental in that realm. He's like, listen to this shit. And I'm like, yeah, man, that's awesome. So um, I really think that's the benefit is I get to basically use these other people's creative juices to start a song, which is my hardest part. Like it is the hardest part for me to to start the concept. That's a smart way to, to uh, complement strengths and weaknesses then as well that you have found about yourself when you're working through. Right. And I think I'm, you know, I, I really like to be self-deprecating, so I try not to brag too much. But I do think I'm decent at, like, I, I can do a lot of different styles, you know, maybe mm-hmm. some better than others. But I do think I switch it up a lot on the album to where um, certain parts doesn't, you know, it doesn't sound like me if you only heard me on the other song and things right, like that. Right, right. Yeah, the, I like the the um, the production on this, I think, also de- you know, contributed a lot to a, a variance in, in styles as well. Um, but I, I really did enjoy the, the production on this, on this project. One thing, uh, going back to some, some origins, since we have people in here that some people that, uh, may not have interacted with you or, or listened before, um, how'd you start going by A to the Mo? Um, so on SoundClick, uh, back to that place, uh, yeah. originally my, my name was just Mo, but in parentheses was my zip code. Cause that's how like they're. I put Mo as my name and it's like, we have a suggestion for you, Mo okay. in your zip code. And I okay. was like, sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's so, and then, so like old internet, like suggesting yeah. your zip code as your username. <laughs> right. And th- and it's so dumb that I didn't think of like, I should do something unique. And honestly, yeah. I see a lot of rappers with really non-unique names. I'm like, you're all messing up. But, yeah. uh, so I get on these forums and there's like a bunch of Mo's, you know, there's like Mo yeah. in Houston and Mo where, and of course yeah. there is. Cause like, yeah. it's like a two letter name. And then, um, I like Jay Z a lot, you know, like in, there was a time before little Wayne was my favorite rapper. Cause I saw normally claim is like my biggest influence probably. Uh, but before that I love Jay Z uh, and this Jay Z versus Eminem sort of a uh, rivalry that would exist back in the day. And so it was kind of like my, my nod to H to the Izzo. If I just go A mm-hmm. to the Mo, cause my first name's Aaron uh-huh. and then my last name's Mosier. And so it, yeah. it kind of makes sense. And, um, yeah, it's, pretty catchy and then right after i did that someone made a name like a to the k and then there was an a mm. to the whatever and i was like yeah. god damn, man I, I i think i started a trend or i jumped on one that already existed one yeah. of the two <laughs> but um I, I just roll with it no it's pretty rare i never you know no one's gonna type my artist name into google and not find me yeah 
Yep. So I think that is cool. I'm, I'm sure you're the same way. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That was, I think when I started out, there was, uh, like one, one person in India and one person in Russia who had some like parts of Petrovita in their name that came up when they Googled and that pretty quickly was like the, went away in the search results as far as it was easy to, to, to take over a bit there. Um, Right. I just assumed when I first saw your name, because I love the PlayStation Vita, you know, yeah, it's like one yeah. of my favorite things. And I was like, it's like he's a stoned Vita player, petrified, like Petra Vita. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know. I was trying to figure it out. And then yeah. you explained it to me. And I was like, oh, no, it has nothing to do with yeah, any no. of that. But uh, but I like that. I like that there's a <laughs> there's there's a potential uh, guess there Story. for people when they yeah. hear that. Yeah. Um, how about going the rest of your your uh, or story or some other parts of your um your life uh you are married correct and what are you what are you doing you say you took a week off of work when you were learning beats what do you i know about this but uh for the podcast what what do you do for work when you're not making music uh yeah i work for a school like uh it work on computers um it's kind of like a janitor for computers, you know, because like I don't want right. to give a good idea of like I'm some high class IT person because I'm I'm really dumb about it. Um, <laughs> like I'm just as good as any other person around our age at computers is. Mm-hmm. But uh, because I have this job, I come in contact with a lot of issues. I'm like, oh, I know how to fix that, you know. And yeah. So before this job, for instance, I couldn't have probably taken apart a computer and changed all the parts. I would have mm-hmm. been a little lost. But now, like, that's that's not a big deal at all. You know, right. I do it all the time. So. Uh, it's like teachers are like, Hey, I can't get to this website. And then mm-hmm. I go to their room and I'm like, you have a typo, you know, <laughs> get them going. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where it's like, Hey, you got to plug this into the wall. That's how power works. Got it. So, so there are moments <laughs> like that, but, uh, in general, <laughs> it's a pretty chill job. And it, honestly, uh, the job I had before this was like working at a call center and it was very stressful and I didn't really enjoy it. And, uh, having the job I have now, because I, I don't know if it's not stressful or if I just handle it well, but mm. it does allow me to like when I get home, I'm I'm totally creative, you know. Like yeah. I don't have some sort of hang up of like, oh, I'm so tired or whatever. Drained. So mm. it's really worked out for me there. Like you know, like they kind of can go hand in hand. And I learn stuff about computers. I come home, I make my computer better, and then mm. it helps me make creative stuff. So excellent. That sounds like a good yeah. uh, a good fit for you. Then what? Um, how about you? Uh, your your wife does i'm assuming that you were doing some hip-hop back in the freestyle days before you met mm-hmm. what does she Correct. think about it how does she feel or support or what's what's that relationship like with with music and being married as well um yeah she that, i mean she met me when i was freestyling like when i first started writing mm-hmm. it was around the time uh, me and her kind of started hanging out and all that um, so she enjoys it. Like I have this old freestyle to the rock lobster beat. I don't know. Yeah. Charles Hamilton's a huh. rapper. I love and he, he done the rock lobster beat mm-hmm. off family guy. And, uh, so anyway, I've, I've rapped on that and you know, she like loves it. Right. But I hate it. Cause it's like, yeah. it's horrible. It's freestyle and it's not even good. Um, but like, so yeah. there are some moments like that where she's like, Oh, she has good memories, but probably because of myself or because I am like, Hey, get out of here while I'm recording and stuff like that. She, I don't think feels very welcoming, like welcomed to uh-huh. be a part of the process. And yeah. so I think that's probably been, uh, you know, my, my bad for a while, but I enjoy when she listens to stuff, you know, yeah. and after the fact, I'm just, I'm a fragile artist, you know, and right. if stuff's not mixed well, I'm like, I don't know. I don't think you can hear it yet. Yeah. Um, but she's not against it. Now, like I said, I did quit rapping for like five years. So mm-hmm. there was a long time, including when I like proposed to her mm-hmm. in which I was not making music. So I did start, you know, I put out this mixtape right before we got married because I was like, I want to see if I can do it. You know, this kind of mm-hmm. brought me back a little bit. And um, when it came out, everyone was like, dude, you're so much better after you haven't done this for five years. Like, I don't know what happened. And then so that's when I was like, I kind of have to want to keep doing this. And yeah. she was like, OK, so she doesn't give me shit. Uh, you know, I have this podcast that takes up so much time. It's ridiculous. And I know, like, if we ever had a kid, I would have to be like, well, I guess I have to cancel some stuff because I just put in mm-hmm. a lot of time and of things that probably don't matter, but, uh, she's in, in the most part, very, uh, supportive. And the fact she's not going to yell at me not to, you know, like <laughs> I saw on Twitter the other day, a guy saying his wife was giving him an ultimatum to quit producing or she was out. Yeah. And I was like, you know, that hasn't happened to me yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. <laughs> see if it does. Yeah. Excellent. What, uh, if you, you, you've talked about debating on, um, 
internet friends for, but that may be down the road you're deciding on things like that. What do you, um, what else is kind of artistically interesting to you to, to work on or do maybe, or what do you have in the works? I know, especially when you're a person that is able to produce your own beats and, and when you want to do songs start to finish on your own, there's uh, usually a lot of ideas, a lot of different things that are in different stages, parts of songs, full songs, demos laying around. What for you do you see working on next or that you might be excited about after you're kind of done with the promo push and stuff for the for this one? Um, yeah, I would like to make weirder songs, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, like I really have like my second favorite genre of music probably behind hip hop. I really enjoyed like uh, I don't, I'm, you might actually be familiar with the Attica CDs is like the perfect example of this. When I was in high school, there was this Attica series, okay. and it basically found it's how I found like Fall Out Boy and Gym Class Heroes, uh-huh. and you know that whole yeah, you know, like they would it would be a compilation of those. And so I did actually kind of like that music, and uh, like Gym Class Heroes is like in my top five favorite mm-hmm. of all time, so I'm not like ashamed of that. But yeah. like, say like simple plan, I don't really like, but mm-hmm. I can do like a really good imitation of mm-hmm. that lead singer. So yeah. I'm like, I just think I could lean into some of that style a little bit, but I don't really know how exactly I would pull it off because I don't play guitar. You know, I'm not like an actual musician, so. Um, I would have to do a little experimenting, but I have wanted to get more into some some stuff people wouldn't expect, if you will, because I do enjoy my rap stuff. But uh, that's not always what's fun. You know, like I'm sure you get I know, you know, uh, when you're saying making music, you just do something stupid. And you're like, oh, that's pretty good. And then like yeah. a year later, a song blows up. That sounds just like something you were just mm, yeah. being stupid about. And you're like, why didn't I just go with that? Like, right. you know, so a lot of me wants to like I try to really focus on just like uh going with the flow i want to try to start new more punch-ins because like right now i'm so good i'm i'm so in on like i write the whole thing out before i do anything right. where i think uh there probably could be some creative fun that be had with some punch-ins and maybe not care as much about my lyrics because right now uh, i spend a great deal of time making sure they all check out like if you mm-hmm. were like well what's he referring to here oh that makes sense like i mm-hmm. care a lot about mm-hmm. that but i'm like but what if i didn't maybe that right. would be cool mm-hmm. i don't know all those thoughts any any chance we can hear that impression? Uh, probably not now. I'm, <laughs> okay. you know, I just I can't have my my wife hear me, uh, yeah, even recording. And I, here you go. All right, all right, uh, that's okay. That's okay. To put you on the spot. It's probably because I went to one simple playing concert in high school. And it yeah. just stuck in my head. <laughs> yeah, I remember back in uh, you you ever have like um local like radio stations doing like uh, I mean in Seattle too. There's some some big ones stations that would get like a lot of those bands together for like a holiday concert type thing where there'd be like 10 or 12 on the on the lineup and that style was very like very prominent bands that were like that and um fall Fall fallout boy and stuff would play at those those shows um but uh yeah what i guess also what uh you mentioned how full up your time gets with the things that you do try and do and accomplish are there any outside hobbies or things you get up to or not really uh yeah time for them? i like video games a lot yeah. um what I, kind of, I, I what do kind of video my, games play, do it for you uh well i have a playstation 5 so that's like yeah. you know the pride and joy but mm-hmm. I've, I've gotten to work i don't even play ps5 games i just play old ps4 games on the ps5 because mm-hmm. you know of course yeah. i do and um I don't know I have a lot of like my my favorite video game of all time is Final Fantasy Tactics, mm-hmm. so I think that probably says something about what type of uh, video game player I am. Um, but lately, I've been obsessed with Stardew Valley because I oh, wanted yeah. to get the platinum in it and get all the achievements. Because I mean, I do I've enjoyed the game for a long time, but I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get that platinum because it's super hard to get. I'm like, I yeah. don't think I'll ever have it, but I've been at it for like two months, and uh, you know, I'm you know maybe like five million gold or whatever it is. The, you know, the currency isn't the yeah. game. So I really enjoy uh, Stardew Valley at the moment. Um, but I, every day I'm like, I need to play a 3D, like high budget game to yeah. get my money's worth out of this PlayStation 5. And then I'm like, oh, I'll just start up Stardew Valley. Have, so um, that's where I've been at. Do you have anything you're you're looking forward to in game releases right now? Or that you've... Uh, the next Ratchet and Clank game, I think looks really good. Um, I'm, I know a lot of people played Ratchet and Clank 
yeah go ahead the 2016 version uh when they redid it with like the movie and they put it out for the ps4 um it was like a budget value game but i remember playing that being like oh man this is great this is like what games were like when i was in junior high but just like with really good graphics there's just like a bunch of weapons and you're just killing enemies and i was like oh this is pretty fun so i'm kind of excited to see what they do on the on the new one i might be about to uh put you on to what will be your your first your big budget 3d game to play on the ps5 um because it that's so funny that you said ratchet and clank because this is a game that i i actually didn't play i didn't play ratchet and clank and some of the games that this some of the art styles and things of this game are getting compared to but there's a game coming out called biomutant uh in exactly a month the 25th of may have you seen anything about that one I, I remember the first trailer that came out for it, yeah. and then it kind of just disappeared. I didn't know it was scheduled yeah, that, to be that out. Yeah, the marketing is, is weird, but it's actually, I heard about it because I was getting like localized ads because it's a Swedish game studio that ended up doing oh. the game. Um, but that looks incredible, and it is like playing as like, I don't know, weird little fox mutant type, type character. Uh, but that is a big open world 3D uh rpg that might be in the vein of something you uh you'd enjoy doesn't have some like roguelike elements possibly in there because right, i've, I I've noticed so. i've enjoyed some roguelikes lately but, uh, i don't think so i think um, it's mostly like i think i think it's mo it's kind of like playing as a, a weird little mutant creature but in a uh you know a witcher 3 a horizon zero dawn or whatever type world uh so do you love Horizon Zero Dawn? It's great. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you could also... There's almost... No, I'm, I've been kind of looking at this game for a while. So, you know, I'm gonna, I'm definitely going to dip my toes in on stream. So you might be able to check it out, get a, get a preview in a month and, and make your decision. Um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but uh, what I think with... Um, do you have... I think a lot of artists, you seem to have a very healthy balance about it. And I think ironically that like I see your your numbers and things rising on on Spotify and stuff and I think a lot of people um they have an individual or a specific goal of I'm making it in the way that this other artist did or I'm doing it to get to this level or I'm going to live off of this at a certain point do you have specific like a specific ambition for your your music um the podcast how they fit into financial plans anything like that um not really i mean right now i feel very proud that my podcast makes money mm -hmm. no you know not a lot it's probably not worth the amount of time i put into it but um you know i make up my hosting costs and all right. that with my patrons and so i feel like it's a cool thing to do and really it only exists it doesn't only exist but a big part of it is it pushes my other things you know it allows me to become friends uh with people who now then become on my album or want to buy my beats or you know so like there is right. some benefit to it yeah. um i don't ever think of it uh in that i'll ever be like financially supported by it now i kind of think it's too late so i think like when you're this many episodes in the chances that you just like blow up and then people like it so i kind of view my podcast probably more as uh i think i'm getting pretty good at it so that if in the future i ever wanted to do a more niche focused podcast because those are more normally the ones that do successful financially um that i could probably pull that off uh you know with everything i'm learning now if that makes right. sense uh, I would say my rap music is probably going to be the one thing i'll always say is like for fun as a mm -hmm. hobby you know like i don't all the music I, or any money I make off the streaming just goes into equipment. You know, I don't, it's very rare right. that it goes to my pocket or anything. Um, and I don't, I mean, I know that this sounds bad. Like, I don't know if I'm good enough to anyone ever, uh, like really like me enough to be successful on it. I think I'm decent. I think I have moments. I'm um, like, for instance, I think you're like very, very good. I think you're way better than most people I hear on the radio, but that, that your talent isn't what decides if you're like a full time, you mm. made it rapper. You know, so like I just never let myself in, in both ways. I never let myself get too like positive of like, yeah, this is going to be it. And then I also I'm like, but then again, mm. there are horrible sounding people that have made a lot of money. So like, who knows? <laughs> yeah. Who knows if yeah. your one song gets on the rap playlist and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, you're like, hey, I made quite a bit of money off this. So right. I don't 
I just really try to keep level headed about the rap music. And then the beats, I will say that's probably like the one area I could probably see making. I mean, I made more money off my beats than any of the other stuff. And, uh, you know, there's always a chance that off your percentage, if it goes to the right person and that's Mm -hmm. all, you know, you just, you have a little more chances there. Um, But then again, it's also probably the most oversaturated internet market that exists. So it is what it is. I think it's a good one thing I, I like about what you do when you have these different different things that, as you as you mentioned, may funnel into each other in different ways and and have some overlap and create relationships that become, um, you know, useful or beneficial in other in other places. And I think a lot of, um, I think a lot of people who are music artists. Um, but want to be, let's say they want to be whatever they consider to be financially successful music artists or have a music career, uh, as it may be. I think people um, maybe would benefit a little more overall from making their focus and their goal um, being productive across multiple areas and learning ways that different things can, can feed into each other um, because I think there's a lot of all eggs in one basket behavior where people feel like the one single that they think is going to be the perfect song that they spend so much time on and everything doesn't do it, you know, or doesn't do what they think it's going to be or the one project or something. And it may be that if, because you also pick up, as you mentioned with your podcasting, you pick up a lot of skills from just practicing and working hard at just about anything and so you could find that you know if they also on the side were like i got a knack for mixing i'm gonna really focus on that and maybe have a side business mixing some other types of music well all of a sudden you might get a song that comes across with someone you've worked with before and you either get to be a part of it or it's a completely different genre and you incorporate a really catchy idea or something into your own music and it pushes you forward in a way that you wouldn't have been if you had 100% just been focused only my music all the time only doing that and there is a balance in in focus but I I really like the approach of doing um yeah doing different things having a kind of foundation that's all staying level and leveling up at the same time versus uh being a little more imbalanced but you know what right do I what know? i do think uh people just miss out and maybe again i could be wrong i'm not saying anything i'm saying is right you know i'm not successful but right. i do think it makes sense to just try to network as much as possible and uh you know i think having a podcast you learn uh just like i'm here calling into yours and there's times yeah. you've called it in mine like you have to collab with podcasts, at least um, in this way I do them and, and you seem to do them with interviews. Like I need someone to talk to you. I don't do a solo podcast. And yeah. then if I can find someone that has their own show and they can come on, promote all they want about it. And then they get help me make a show. Like you just yeah. learn a very like you're you're building the community. You're kind of helping each other out. And the same with the song. Like I'm the same yeah. way with rap music now. I'm like, you be on this. I'll be on that. Kind of like uh, Brad Sorex has one of my beats. Yeah. He asked me to be on it. And I just was like. I don't think I'm going to be able to match y'all because y'all just took all the good stuff. So, uh, but he was like, I'm thinking Petra Vita would fit. Yeah. And I was like, that'll be perfect. So now like that you and Brad will have a really song fun. out. Yeah. But like, I'm still going to be connected to it. Yeah. And like, I think that's all like super fun, you know, like I think that's cool stuff. And there are people that very much want to do everything themselves, And I am that way sometimes. Uh, but it's just more fun when there's more people involved. Now it can be not fun if you're working with people that you don't enjoy working with or, you know, that are, things can get annoying. You know, that's Mm -hmm. that we definitely, I'm sure dealt with that. But in general, if you find the people that are like your internet friends, um, you normally can make things work out pretty well. Yeah. You have a number of creative um, pursuits in these projects we've been talking about. And you've actually just been giving us a a bit of wisdom here. Um, I usually uh, like to ask guests, too, if they have, um, you know, we all we all learn. I think that's one of the we have a a lot of uh, apprehension about uh, about growing older or growing up and, and things like that. But I think one of the like most beautiful things is like you're, you're always acquiring all the, all this knowledge. And if you can do things I look at it this way, like when I see someone come in the Twitch chat and I'm kind of like, nah, don't do that. Like, here's think, think of something this way. Um, you know, if you can help 
people <laughs> I heard it I heard it put really well once of uh, someone said I just want to uh, basically help learn the things early that I learned late or make the mistakes early that I made late and um, do you have any kind of uh, advice for someone, you know, maybe you're, maybe you're looking at your, a younger version of yourself as well and thinking like, hmm, what would I say to them about getting into be it their music or their podcasting or whatever, like a creative hobby or passion that they have? Um, I would say this guy sounds savage. I just think audio quality is important. So that's mm-hmm. something I fought a very long time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, for years and years recorded on a USB microphone that I got for 60 bucks, you know, off eBay at the time. And I didn't, I was like, it doesn't matter if it sounds clear because my lyrics are so good. You know, like that was my thought process all (laughs) the time. And it did matter. People will listen to it. And if it sounds like you recorded next to a fan, they're not going to like it. Like, even if you say something awesome, it's going to be very hard, you know? So it, it took me a long time to learn, to even know, to not even learn, to like know that I needed an audio interface and an XLR microphone. Like that yeah. just that alone was going to do like so much to like all of a sudden people that were your friends from high school be like, man, you sound really good. And all that's mm-hmm. all I did, you know, change. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, and then I'd hear the same thing for podcasts. I have a lot of uh, people that will want me to be on podcasts and they are recording on something very, very like tin cans. Like it just sounds really right. bad. Like yeah. they do no mixing. They're like, yeah. we're, we're bouncing it. We just record and yeah. bounce it. And I'm like, yeah. no, man, I got a compressor or do something. Yeah. Yep. So uh, I just think that goes a long way because the like layman, mm-hmm. they won't stick around through that. You know, like they want it to sound like, you know, at least fake being professional as best you can. Yeah. So like, even if you're first starting out, like I have a lot of rappers I give feedback to, they hit mm-hmm. me up because they know I'll, I'll be fairly honest about it. Mm-hmm. And I'll just be like, you need to clean up this section. You have all these weird mouth noises here. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not saying I don't ever have those. I do as well. Yeah. But I do think when you get like fresh ears on something, uh, it'll let you hear those and then try really hard not to be defensive when you get, feedback. get that feedback. Mm. You know, like I'm actually okay with you people being defensive. If you didn't ask for feedback and someone gives it to you, yeah. then I understand being defensive because mm-hmm. you weren't ready for that. But if like you ask me my opinion and I'm like, I don't think, you know, from this section to this section, you should probably respit that. I, I have gotten hit with like, I respit, not, you know, like they get yeah, all, they, like, they get offended by it. Yeah. And so, Right. So, and, and I even, sometimes people have talked, you need to respit that. And I'm like, I can't, I've tried it like 80 times. That's mm-hmm. the best I'm getting, you know, like I've, I've said yeah. that to yeah. people before. So uh, just, if that's yeah. what it is, I mean, just let people know, but some people, um, I don't know. I think that that stands in a lot of people's way. And then I guess also just do stuff. Um, a lot of people sit around and they're like, well, I just got to mix this for another two weeks. Or once mm-hmm. I get my first 10 podcast guests lined up or whatever, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, some yeah. excuse yeah, of why yeah, they're yeah. not starting yet. And it's like, if you just do something and you start the machine rolling, it's oh. def- you'll just keep doing it. I mean, yeah. if you enjoy it. So that's always the best advice I have. Awesome. Yeah, that's a that's a theme that I've talked with the other guests on as well, is that momentum of simply starting something is so, so much greater than the, the, the step from episode zero to one is a much bigger effort than from one to two and then even more from two to three and, and so on when you're, when you're working on something. So, uh, right. Anything else you want to leave guests or listeners with? And then of course, let us know where we can listen to internet friends three. Uh, maybe, maybe give us a couple of tracks from the project that were standouts for you yeah. for working on. Uh, yeah, I'll start with the Internet Friends 3. You can listen to it at all the streaming sites. I don't think there's yep. any I didn't put it on. So if you search for A to the Mo, it might be copped somewhere on the screen somewhere. Just probably yep. spelled like that. And um, yeah, you'll find it. You're, you should. There aren't, aren't many of us. I also have an A to the Mo makes beats Spotify page. It's just beats. If you want to uh, stream some beats, y'all can always do that. It gets very little traffic, so I never promote it. Um, uh, my favorite tracks that I'm really feeling at the moment, mm-hmm. um, and this is... Uh, Going into the project, the second song, Think Ahead, I was like really, really into. And I still am. You know, I still like it. But that was like my favorite going into it. And then um, the last song I actually recorded is Past That uh, Mm -hmm. with Mikey Lax. And so almost always the last song I record on a project I like a lot because it's like the freshest, newest Mm -hmm. thing. Um, So that one really stuck out to me. And then I've gotten a lot of good feedback on last time because I'm doing some auto-tune singing. And mm-hmm. Neptune Blue. Uh, yeah, I noticed that. I had, we talked about that on the stream. I think the 
the tuning stuff. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, no, you're fine. And uh, so, you know, a lot of people have been like, hey, you can, uh, that's pretty good. You know, I mm-hmm. could expect that from you. So I do think ego wise, that's making me like that one a little bit where I'm like, all right, you know, hey, there you go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those are probably my standouts. And then as far as anything to leave people on, uh, definitely check out my podcast, uh, which is a podcast with Mo. It's really hard to find because those are all very generic words. Um, but I have learned if you put those in quotation marks on like Spotify or other podcasting apps, it helps pull up a title with that exact title. So you put a podcast with Mo, no E it'll pull up. And uh, we have a music podcast where about every two or three weeks, we play 18 (laughs) underground music songs, me my homie skinny. And then the third person kind of rotates and uh, we just get a little intoxicated. Yeah. You guys have some great reactions to (laughs) I was trying to listen when you have one of my tracks on there as well. But I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Skinny's went to calling you Petra Vita the artist, like you're Tyler the creator. He like yeah, I don't know. I think he really artist. thinks your artist name is is Petra Vita the one artist. One of my favorites was uh, was from from a recent spinoff. There there was like a, a stumble on the name, and then there are all these like uh, morphs of it, and one of them was Petra Velvita. <laughs> like crap. Oh yeah. Me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that one was good i enjoyed that um so yeah i think our music podcasts are probably the the most fun things we do and it, it yeah. lines up the most with like uh you know people i know that make music and um yeah we give like a one sentence feedback and then we're like yeah. on to the next one so it's mm-hmm. not very serious it's really just to get people to hear their music and then yeah. our homies over at graveyard entertainment they might throw yeah. you on a playlist after you're on it that'll get yeah. you a bunch of plays so yeah. i mean always worth it Absolutely. And uh, when we when we hop off of here, feel free as well. If you want to give me um, some direct links to the podcast on Spotify or, or platforms that you yeah. most like you think are, are easiest to access, I'll add them to the uh, YouTube description for this and the podcast description when I upload them. So then if people want to check these things out, they can go right to it and they don't have to try and search. So, uh, yeah. Thanks a ton, man, for, for do, man. being on. And um, I'm looking forward to, to what comes up next. I'm going to re-listen again to to some of these tracks that you highlight and maybe we can put them in the uh, the stream safe playlist I've been making for Twitch streamers. That one's been been getting some, oh, uh, nice. some interest lately. So absolutely. Well done. And uh, thanks a lot. We'll speak soon, I'm sure. All right, man. Thanks for having me. Peace. Peace.